don't call it a comeback. We've been here before. We're trying it again. Much like the great Conor McGregor, folks, the Kings are back. I hope they're hearing this reference this time. It is the all-new sports show coming to you from our secret underground lair. Yes. Where we're going to be coming to you for uh, at least the foreseeable future. Yeah. Until someone wants to pay the price. We built our own panic room. We finally did it. That's right, folks. The empire we built still stands. Um, Just maybe not superpower level quite anymore. But, but folks, we're still here. I'm Wes Bradshaw. He's Ed Green. We welcome everybody to the first episode of the uh, 2016 high school football season. It is the all-new sports show. Yes. Uh, We we kept the name. Um, Same... uh, it's, on the, Same it's on the Facebook page, so. That's right, folks. We're coming to you, as you can kind of tell, folks. We're going to be coming to you this year, like we said, for the foreseeable future here on Facebook Live. Yeah. So, you know, you don't have to wait till 8 o'clock on Sunday night when there might be something else on that kind of gets ratings. Of course, if we're going to do this on Sunday afternoon, we still might want to rethink time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's right, folks. But, hey, see, you can bring us up while you watch your uh, yeah. your your football game yeah. on your other channels. So yes. this is a perfect setup. It's folks. perfect for you millennials who didn't end up watching the Olympics. Exactly. It's great. Uh, and for all you who went to the Olympics and actually made it back, being in the water, congratulations. Uh, but, folks, we are here. We are going to take care of week one of high school football. It is yes. in the books. Mm. It kind of snuck up on us. Yeah. As in, I was like, oh, crap, football starts tonight. Let me do something about this. Uh, folks, of course, we made our way out to Death Valley. Yes, we did. Which was an aptly titled name this mm-hmm. week for the Pirates of Corn Holders as we saw Randy Raper's fourth edition of the Northern Nash Knights. Yes. And they got off to a uh, to a winning start. We'll mm-hmm. touch on that in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to go around our, uh, our tri-county areas. We're going to bring you all the scores. Absolutely. Um, this week we're not going to have any calling guests, but that doesn't mean we're not going mm-hmm. to in the future. Yeah. Josh Walfish is already on standby. Josh He's Walfish is already on standby. Um, we have a new Rocky Mount Telegram writer this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to see him. Of course, our buddies in Wilson, yes. uh, you know, Paul Durham, uh, Jimmy, uh, Lewis. Jimmy Lewis, um, still uh, still working on Tom Ham. <laughs> Anyone get ever? Get that man a cell phone. <laughs> Anyone ever? That? Get that man a phone that isn't connected to a wall. <laughs> And a typewriter, yeah. but anyway, folks, we're gonna we're gonna try to keep some things the same. But hey, we're gonna do a little a uh, l- little more free format yes. here. Uh, at this point, we don't have any commercials. Sorry, PJ. Sorry, PJ. You're still our guy, though. If you want to provide a suit stuff, Absolutely. we will happily show your story. Exactly. I'll even comb my hair for that one. But we will. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Uh, yes. Sixty seconds of soccer. Of course. Of course, we're bringing you that. Wish we'd done this last week instead of this week, but okay. anyway, we'll get to it. But, folks, we're going to start off, as Ed uh, and, uh, said, uh, made our way out to Death Valley yes. on Friday night. We did. And Ed, a very impressive performance from the Knights of Northern Nash. Very big by them. Uh, Tyler Polinski, new quarterback, bringing him in as a two-year backup mm-hmm. to replace Christian Daniels. How would the running back core get on with no, like, true running back mm-hmm. um, going with more of a rotation? Uh, but with the combination of Richardson as the more strong back mm-hmm. and DeCarlo Royster as a speed back, even though it, it seemed like he was limited by hamstring problems mm-hmm. in the second half, uh, when he would come on the field, he would be a flash of energy for that Knights team. I was very impressed with, with how they have grown as an offense. And we mentioned this mm-hmm. a few times in the broadcast, West. It, it was Northern's defense was always good. Mm-hmm. Not great, but it was good enough to mm-hmm. win them football games. If the offense could give them a little bit of a break by staying on the field for more than three plays and a punt. And that's what they did Friday night against Corinth mm-hmm. Holders. They had sustained drives. Even when they didn't result in points, right. they had sustained drives. This is a better Northern Nash offense and one that is going to be, I think, a very tough out, especially when they have that defense led by the man we interviewed as our player of the game, Isaiah Gay, who had two sacks on the night. That's right. One guy who really stood out to me, Emmanuel Henderson, who we didn't even have yes. listed as a running back. Of course, our roster wasn't exactly the. You guys saw that. Crim de la crim. It was more all new sports shows. That's why I mentioned to Carlo Royster because we spent half the game calling him uh, Jamon Moore. Yeah. So, uh, Jamon Moore. Hey. <laughs> um. Sure. Have a good game next time. <laughs> um. What we didn't see from Northern, which they do still have, they have some actually some good size and speed yes. on the outside. Polinski didn't throw a lot of the outside, uh, but they do have some big receivers who mm-hmm. I think we'll see more going forward. 
But what it was, it was, as we talked with head coach Randy Raper, mm-hmm. it was typical Randy Raper football. Yes, it was. It was smash mouth. We're going to line up in an eye. We're going to line up in an offset. Mm-hmm. We're going to run the football. We're going to allow our offensive line to make holes, move people around. That's exactly what they did. We're going to gain four yards. Uh-huh. And then when we get the ball back to you, our defense is going to come up and punch you directly in the mouth. Yes. Uh, Randy Raper, of course, over at Hunt Ed, we were used to those speed rushers off the edge. Mm-hmm. We were used to the big boys uh, making holes in the middle, uh, taking blockers with them. Absolutely. That's exactly what we saw the other night. And the guy like Isaiah Gay is the one who's really going to benefit from this because he is that outside speed rusher, somewhat in the mold of a Lewis Neal yes. that Randy Raper had a at Hunt. All athletic end. Great guy. Yeah. Uh, great speed, mm-hmm. great first uh, step, great initial burst. Yeah, that's what we saw. Uh, from Corinth Holders, now let's get this out of the way. So Corinth Holders. They also they, had to break in a new quarterback. Yeah. Unfortunately, he didn't have two years as a quarterback being a backup either. He was a wide receiver. Yeah. Um, Corinth Holders, it, it was not, I wouldn't even call it good quarterback play, mm-hmm. really by any means, much less great quarterback play. Yeah. Um, it was a young man who was a converted wide receiver. Uh, I was speaking with um, a friend of mine who's at Corinth Holders mm-hmm. after the game. He said, who would have thought in a school of 1,800 kids, we can't find one who can throw a football. It does seem <laughs> to be a little bit weird. That's right, Corinth Holders fan after the ball game. But, um, y- you know, take nothing away from Northern Nash. They no. went out, they they put their game plan in place, and they they converted their game plan. I believe they had one turnover on the entire night. I believe so. Uh, that was a fumble uh, kind of in the, in the second half. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and really, they, they just never – while they never pulled away from corn mm-hmm. holders, they never really stuck the nail in the coffin until maybe that last touchdown. Sure. They never let them get close. That's I believe right. one trip to the red zone for corn holders, that ended in a fumble for them. Mm-hmm. And and when you th- think of how that defense was so solid, now, now when they go up against a team like Rocky Mountain with so many great skill positions, when they go up against a team maybe well, like Tarbur in two weeks. Yeah, Tarbur in two weeks, which we'll be at. You know, that's, that's, right. that's going to be the ultimate test for them. But they're going to have, I think, a better season than last year. Mm-hmm. And this is a team that I think five and five, six and five, somewhere, or six and five, seven and four, maybe. Well, six and, and four, the playoffs. six and four gets them to the playoffs, right. I would yeah. believe. So. so, and that would be, I think, a great accomplishment mm-hmm. for Randy Raper in his fourth season, his first year with all of his guys. That's right. Um, now, it's not going to get easier. Northeastern coming to town. Northeastern just mm-hmm. beat Plymouth, who is one of the top 1A teams in the state. Beat them 34 to nothing this past That's week. Big rubbing. That's who's coming to Northern Nash this week. And then, of course, in two weeks, the Tarboro Vikings, yep. who, if you're watching this and you know this area, there's not, as we said tonight, there's not really a lot we have to say about <laughs> Tarboro. They're Tarboro. We're going to talk about them in a few minutes. Uh, but for Northern, it's a tough stretch. And then they go to 4A Laney. Yeah. Um, so it's a tough first four games of the season. They get a little break after that before they go into conference uh, with, I believe, Goldsboro and maybe Smithfield Selma. I didn't have the wrong. I didn't have their schedule up, but I believe that's their um, six non-conference games. Uh, that's a tough schedule. At least it gives a little break the last two weeks before the bye. Then Certainly. they go into conference season. Um, but it's a northern team that this is. There is positivity. Mm-hmm. Because as far as the last few years we've seen this northern team, we haven't had a lot positive to talk about. We always say, well, yeah, they're pretty good up front, and then three guys get hurt, <laughs> and then they're not good anymore. Well, this year they've got some depth up front on both lines. That's going to be the strength of that football team. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for definitely an improved Northern Nash team. And, you know, here's the thing. We'll see them in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Then after that, we won't see them again until the last game yes, of the season. That's true. When they come to Rocky Mount. So we're going to definitely have um, a full season yeah. view of Northern Nash. Where were they at the beginning and exactly. where do they end up? We saw them at the beginning. We saw them a few weeks in. Then we're going to see them where they end up. So we're going to have a good mm-hmm. view of Northern this year. I'm actually I'm excited to see that football. And game. I think there are winnable games in conference this year Absolutely. for them. You know, we'll talk about Hunt. <sighs> well, I mean, Nash Central still in rebuilding mode. Southern Nash, they had a big win the other night. But are, are they going to be able to sustain that long term? We don't really know that much about Fike because they haven't also played their first game of the that's season right. yet. Uh, we know what Rocky Mount has, but that's a rivalry game. So I think there is definitely wins in that conference schedule for Northern Nash if they take advantage of it and if their their numbers hold up over the course of the season. And as you speak of that rivalry game, let's jump right into our next game. We're sure. just going to kind of go through the rest of we'll what happened. Give our you a little scoreboard that we go. have a little bit. If you guys uh, can kind of see that. Rocky Mount beat South Granville second year in a row, uh, 48 nothing. Yep. I believe last year it was 44 to nothing. Um, 
So obviously South Granville, yeah. <laughs> not really much. Good one to put on your season opener. Yeah, good one for the season opener. Um, Rocky Mountain comes home. Uh, they unveil. I don't know what they. I'm sure they put up a sign. I'm sure there's a nice new sign out there. Uh, but for the first time, Rocky Mountain fans able to see their defending state champions in action. Um, and that's exactly how you want to start the season. 48 nothing. Sherrod Green on the sideline did not play. He has a broken hand that he's recovering from. Um, so, you know, th this wasn't one, obviously, he was too yeah. needed for. Uh, that's a very, very skilled, very good Rocky Mountain defense. They've got speed. They've got size. Remember, a lot of those guys from the state title team are back on the defensive side of yes. the football for Rocky Mountain. So they are going to be very good stopping people this season. The key for Rocky Mountain is going to be what usually isn't the problem <laughs> is scoring points. Yeah. Now you say, well, you put 48 up. Well, that's not ramble. Um, Rocky Mountain, they're breaking in some new running backs this year. Uh, they do have B.J. Sanders back. He's a college prospect. He's a home run hitter. Yeah. Ran for over 1,200 yards a season ago as not the feature back. So you got to figure he's going to have a good season if he stays healthy going forward. Um, they've got other kids in there who ran the football. New quarterback, Mackenzie Wright. Yes. Um, I think he's going to be more of a uh, mobile threat mm -hmm. than uh, Forrest Bell was. But the big thing, here's what you got to replace with Forrest Bell, the leadership yes. quality of Forrest Bell. You know, the – what, what, of course, as you people may know, I missed the state championship game last yep. year. And, of course, he made one of the biggest plays exactly. with his legs, no dice. Exactly. You know, and, that, and what I was getting at was the play that is kind of remembered by everyone mm -hmm. was Forrest Bell picking up that massive mm -hmm. first down off of a fourth down mm -hmm. play that kept the, I believe, game tying drive mm -hmm. alive yes, uh, in the fourth quarter. And what that was, I mean, that's just a kid who understood the situation um, and, you know, put – every single bit of himself on the line yep. to make that play. From what I hear, took a massive hit. Yes, at the end of it, yes, he did. It took a massive hit. But also hit, had a massive juke at the beginning exactly. of it to start that. Held on to the football. So that's what you got to replace. You can replace a kid like that athletically. You can mm -hmm. replace that arm. You've got to replace the leadership and the guy who just has the knowledge of the situation. That's Perfect. what Forrest Spell is so good at. So McKenzie Wright has big shoes to fill, but apparently he came in, had a nice game on Friday night, a 44-yard yes. touchdown pass in there. So, you know, as a quarterback – it's nice to go ahead and you get that first mm -hmm. touch. It's kind of like it's kind of like the football that we love, Ed. Yeah. It's good as a new guy to yes. come in, get you for, open your account. Yeah. And that's I what McKenzie that. Wright did. He opened his account, uh, passing the ball. I believe this is a Rocky Mountain squad that's going to put points on the board. Yeah. Offensive line is going to be their issue. Three new starters on that line of what was a strength last year. They do bring back David Keck, their center, yes. who he was a big piece of that line last year. And he's going to kind of be the – he's the leader of that offensive line this year. But those other guys, you got to grow up. you got to grow up quick. Yes. So, uh, for Rocky Mount, they're off to a flyer. They've got a tough schedule because this week, maybe the biggest game in the state comes to Rocky Mount. As uh, Middle Creek beat Rocky Mount last – no, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, beat Rocky three. Mount last year 24-21. Mm -hmm. uh, they come in as the number one ranked team in the News and Observer poll. Rocky Mount's number four. Uh, they're only behind Wake Forest and J.H. Rose, so I think they play the next week. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, uh, the N and O poll is it's all coming through Rocky Mountain here early in the season. Uh, obviously, with Corinth Holders coming in, and then what's coming up next? Um, Don't think Corinth Holders will be in that poll anymore, though. I think that might have been it. But, uh, yep. but but so that's coming up for Rocky Mountain. So still some big games. To yeah, D'Angelo Collins, Jalen West, that's Watson, right. both of those guys had to, a pair of touchdowns mm -hmm. each, running the football, and as you said. Uh, uh, Wright had to pass to Charlie Williams, mm -hmm. 44 yards for the touchdown. Uh, defense only let up three first downs in the game for Rocky Mountain. Again, it's South Granville, but it's it's always nice to just keep that momentum going, especially for an experienced group like that. And especially when you've got your SEC committed yeah. linebacker who no, I'm playing. didn't play. Yeah, <laughs> It's good for the rest of them still. So uh, they had a big win. Southern Nash also 44. That's right. uh, Northwood 13. That was a That's big right. win for them, having to replace a trio of seniors uh, not the least of which uh, the quarterback, Zach Foster, who came in and, and was really more of a, a fun and run option. He could mm -hmm. also throw it a little bit. And we thought, you know, oh, well, they're, they're not going to throw anymore. But they, they still had a few passes uh, mm -hmm. up their sleeve in the game. Uh, there was at least one for a touchdown. So, I mean, Southern Nash sort of picking up where they left off. From, from everything I've heard, and folks, unfortunately for us this year, as you see with here, us here, online exclusive we didn't get our chance to do our preseason coaches yes. tour that we usually do just timing wasn't working out for us and a lot of things going on right uh, but you know we still hear a lot of things and from what i've heard out of southern nash it's a very talented squad mm -hmm. they did bring back some really good players on that 
That would be a good football team. Kendrick Bell, if you remember from him from any of our games last year, a great sophomore running back. That's right. Not used a whole lot with those other guys that they had, like Jaquan Mitchell and Taj Deans. But he, when he, he impressed us, the few touches he was getting, mm -hmm. and I, he had four touchdowns on the mm -hmm. day in this game. He is going to be asked to carry a lot of that load this year. Don't forget, they do have a straight-up game-breaker, Nadir Thompson. Yes. They call him Flesh. Yes. Ha! Ah. Thank you. Uh, actually, an NC State commitment. He's mm -hmm. a junior. Mm -hmm. Rising junior. Uh, that kid is a home run hitter from anywhere on the field. This is really a team that is kind of in transition, but will still be able to compete. Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think it's going to be them and Rocky Mount, to me, are the two best teams in the Big mm -hmm. East. And they're going to have an absolute slugfest. I believe it's week three of the conference season. So, yeah. um, they're going to have an absolute all-out war between those mm -hmm. two. So this is going to be a whole, whole lot of fun uh, seeing Southern Nash yep. going forward. Um, for the not good, uh, Lumberton 40, <laughs> Hunt nil. This was a this was a game Hunt really dominated last year. 28-7 for most of it until Hunt, or sorry, Lumberton pulled back late to 28-20. Mm -hmm. uh, this time taking the trip down I-95 to Lumberton towards the South Carolina border, and uh, Hunt got spanked. Uh, first year uh, head coach Keith Byram. I mm -hmm. uh, can't imagine he's too happy with this. Um, it, it was sort of a manageable halftime deficit, 26 nothing. You think maybe there's a chance they can come back, but Lumberton really never gave them a chance, and Hunt is, as, as their coaching staff is a little bit in transition there, it looks like this is a team in transition as well. Well, and, and here's the thing with Hunt. This is a program that for 30 years mm -hmm. has never been in transition. Mm -hmm. You know, and even when Randy Raper left, Stevie Hennett stepped in. Mm -hmm. um, the, I mean, they went to the Eastern Finals the first year. Yeah. Really, the, the loss from on Hennett near the end of his uh, run was more the fact that they just didn't quite have the home run hitters they yes. had under Raper. Mm -hmm. Um, now, this year, this is the real first year of big transition. Byram has been on this staff a long yes, yeah. time, so that that's a helpful thing. But still, you know, when you go from Randy Raper to Stevie Hennett, mm -hmm. now to Byram, and not saying Byram can't yeah. become an absolute hunt legend himself, mm -hmm. but it, 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 it's a change. Yeah. It's still a change. It's still a change at the top. Uh, you've got to figure Byram's bringing in some new, uh, some new ideas, of course. some different things. So this and this is a hunt team that was kind of up and down last year. They are breaking in a new quarterback. Uh, they had a three-year starter that they've lost at the quarterback yes. position. Uh, Darius Barnes was a really good uh, back for them for a long time. You know, this is a team that's having to break in a lot of new players. So I don't know what's going to happen for Hunt, but looking ahead at Hunt's schedule, you know, Ed, we're going to be able to almost, you know, going back to Northern Nash, we're going to see where Northern Nash may stack up. Because next week, Hunt goes to Hertford County. After that, two Corinth holders. The next week, they host Northeastern. Yes. So they're kind of having Northern Nash's <laughs> week one and week two and week three and week four. Right. So we'll be able to get a little bit of a look between those two and see maybe where they are. But it could, this could be a year where Hunt maybe has really come back to the pack. Absolutely. For so many years, especially when we've been doing football, Hunt has been one of the favorites to win the conference. Won the Absolutely. conference, I believe, four straight years as we were mm -hmm. doing it. Uh, made all those trips to the Eastern Finals, couldn't punch their way through against Northeast Guilford. And this is this is the first time that, you know, the well has run dry. As we, as we like to mention, we love, we love to connect it back to our football. Um, I heard commentators talking the other day when I was watching Manchester United versus Southampton. How long can you keep going to that well of the young kids mm -hmm. but, and as, as old ones leave mm -hmm. before the well just kind of dries so. up? Tarboro sort of even went through a little bit of that a couple mm -hmm. years ago where the talent level just wasn't what they're used to mm -hmm. of the next kids coming up. That happens sometimes. At Hunt, it hasn't really happened much mm -hmm. for them lately, but this could be one of those times in addition to the coaching changes. Mm -hmm. Again, nothing against Coach Byram, but – you know, Coach Hennett being there for, I believe, 26 years when he took mm -hmm. over, you know, that's not something you just replace overnight. Exactly. And, and that's where they're going to – there's going to be some growing pains this year, I think, for Hunt. Exactly. And, two, it's high school football, folks. Yeah. Don't forget, this isn't college. This isn't the NFL. We're in the NFL. If you just have, you know, really good front office, you know, New England yeah. always finds guys. You know, yeah. Alabama just recruits the best players in the country every year. You Despite know. Despite what Jay Trost uh, can tell you, you can't just have transfer people in every day. Oh, salty. Um, you know, it's it's not Florida State where they can just keep recruiting. Yeah. You know, you're you're kind of given what you're given. Um, we've seen that at Nash Central, mm -hmm. especially. Um, you know, 
and we've seen it at Northern, we've seen it at Rocky Mount before, we've seen it just about everywhere. Hunt had kind of been the one we hadn't seen it at, yeah. but now maybe we're seeing it at Hunt for a season coming up. So it might be a tough season on board with the Warriors, but if there's one thing we know, Mojo never takes days off. No. Those guys are going to work their butts off to try to get where they want to be. Certainly. And talking about a team, let's let's go a team that has worked their butts off to get there where they want to be, and they are the Tarboro Vikings. They yeah. put 42 on the board. I guess Nash Central. Nash Central. Good luck, Phils. Um, let, let's start. And let's not start even a perfect game. As always, Jeff Craddock never happy, uh, at least outwardly. We miss you, Jeff Only Craddock. Only with us. See you in two weeks. Um, but like but that, yeah. we, we got to see them uh, doing a little bit. They had they had a couple turnovers. They, they were a perfect three for three scoring touchdowns in their first three drives. And then they have a fumble. And they didn't really pull away from Nash Central until late on in the game. But I have a feeling that this is this is one of those week one games where, you know, for Tarboro, you're just trying to start rounding into form. Mm -hmm. And again, these are these are the tests for Tarboro right. this year. And they're only going to get tougher out of conference sure. before they get maybe not as tough <laughs> in conference. That's a nice way to put that. I'm trying to be diplomatic. That's the nicest way we can say that. Um, you know, this is a Tarboro team that uh, since going to 1A especially, mm -hmm. Jeff Craig has made sure to really front load that schedule. Mm -hmm. um, Nash Central has been on the schedule for a while now. That's kind of you know, up until this year, that had kind of been our traditional yeah. opening game because we always got two uh, in-area area teams, teams yeah. with each other. Uh, of course, this year we ended up going to Northern Nash, but, you know, I think we got a little better of a game. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but you know, for Tarboro, this is a team that um, has been building for a couple years. Mm -hmm. This is a team that Jeff Craft feels uh, in the last year of this current incarnation of 1A football with the Wallace Rose Hill, with the James Keenan, mm -hmm. even with those two there, Jeff Craft feels this is a team that can win a state championship. Absolutely. Those kids feel this is a team that can win a state championship. And, and you know, kind of just a pride factor, the, the only two teams that in 1A that have been able to stop them are James Keenan and Wallace Rose Hill. Both those teams are going to 2A next season. Mm -hmm. Tarver is staying in 1A. So, you know, the they want it to the be like if they, if they win the state title next season, uh -huh. they don't want it to be, well, it's because Wallace Rose Hill and James Rose Keenan weren't on exactly. there anymore. So I think they have a definite point to prove. Mm -hmm. I think now they've been deep enough against the playoffs in the playoffs against these teams enough. As you said, mm -hmm. those are the teams that have been knocking them out every year. Mm -hmm. I think, as you said, it's a matter of pride. I think they want to go through those oh, teams. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I think they have a team that can beat these teams. Oh, yeah. They've come close a couple times. But I think this is the year that Jeff Craddock has a, a team yeah. that can go on the road even and be one of these teams. I think they want third, fourth round to be one way or the other, Rose Hill, James yeah. Keenan. And, and like you said, Dave, that's just a matter of pride. Yeah. Coming up for Tarboro, like we said, doesn't get easier. Washington coming to town mm -hmm. uh, this week. Then they go to Northern Nash, to Franklinton, who, of course, next year after realignment will be coming into the Big yes. East. So that'll be one, you know, hey, hey Coach Craddock, shoot us some film. Let us <laughs> see what we're seeing. It. Um, and then at Southern Nash, what which – We'll be doing that's gonna that might be the non conference game of the year. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be spectacular. It usually is and this year yeah. I think it's gonna live up to That's gonna be spectacular. And then of course, uh, before oh, the bye week then. function of the junction, uh, they are hosting Southwest Edge Coast this year. Could be a little tables yeah. turning from last year. Yeah, yeah, it could be a little different this year. Um, but for Tarboro, you know, good thing. It's gonna be a big season for the Vikings unless everything falls apart for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't expect Tarboro to have more than maybe one loss mm -hmm. going into the playoffs. Um, uh, as for Nash Central, uh, head coach Chris Lee uh, is saying to the Rocky Mountain Telegram, you'd hope that it would look at it that way as uh, being becoming better, but a lot of times being kids are just going to look at the scoreboard. We're a lot better than we were at this time last year. I hope that's true. Well, there, there were signs of mm -hmm. progress last year. I hope those start to carry over, uh, yeah. but I believe this will be. It, it's tough for a program that has been so long now rebuilding to open the season with, in my mind, whatever Coach Lee wants to say, nothing against him, but what is a disappointing result to go and get shut out like that? Um, it, it should get a little better the next few weeks. Yes. Um, uh, Smithfield Selma mm -hmm. at home. It was a win for them, I believe. Uh, last year. North Johnston, that's right, um, who I believe they beat North Johnston a year ago, too. That was their two wins last year, yeah. were Smithfield Selma and North Johnston. So there's a chance. Uh, at home the next two weeks for them to get those two if wins. If they rebound, they're going to be okay. They're sitting 2-1. and Here's the thing. Then they go to Southwest Edgecombe, home for Beddingfield at Bunn before opening the conference season against Rocky Mount. But maybe those w some of those wins, Southwest Edgecombe, we'll talk about them in a second. Uh, Beddingfield, even though they look good, there's some issues there maybe. Um, 
maybe those Long end up being we'll if, if the, you know, Monday. eventually. Uh, you never know if they get those two wins against mm -hmm. Smithfield, Selma, and against South Johnston. Maybe that that gives them some momentum going forward mm -hmm. into the Southwest Edgecombe and Bettingfield games, and maybe they come out of non-conference like four and two. You never know. And here's a big thing too. Um, this is NAS Central's last season in 2A, yes. or I'm sorry, 3A. in 3A. They're yes. going down to 2A next season, yes. uh, which should hopefully help open NAS Central up a little bit. I think if nothing else, not that NAS Central doesn't have the kids, I don't think, to compete at 3A. Right. I just think a change of scenery could maybe do mm -hmm. NAS Central good Certainly. at this point. Um, get away from Northern, get away from Rocky Mountain, get away from Southern, and kind of be out on their own, doing their own thing. That could be a big boon. And we talk Northern about that Central. Southwest Edgecombe betting field stretch. They better get used to those two teams because they're going right. to be in their conference next year. That's right. That's right. So that will be coming in the future. Uh, speaking of Southwest Edgecombe, I saw a lot of preseason stuff. Uh, basically, Southwest Edgecombe was preseason in the NNO Top 25. Uh, preseason favorites to win their conference. But what did we say about all those things during the game Friday night? I mean. They're usually predicated yeah. on last year. Exactly. And what did Jonathan Cobb kind of tell us last year after their season? He said, guys, he said, he just looked at somebody and said, I'm losing a lot of seniors. Yeah. And we kind of saw that, you know, Dylan Hodges is back. And then they kind of lost him. We don't know for how long. It doesn't seem like it's going to be for too much. But he did leave the game on Friday night with an injury. He I'll, was one I'll, of a handful. I have to use my insider oh, knowledge please. to get to that. Please. Of course. Uh, I, I work on getting you folks an injury yeah. update. Uh, but Eaton Holmes, A, and I hear say Eaton Holmes, A, good program. Mm -hmm. They were a program on the rise, have a great mm -hmm. coach. Coach who was at Richmond County previously. Also, this um, game, 46-13, 13-13 at the half. Exactly. Second half just got out of hand for them. Uh, but Southwest, they've got to break guys in, and they've got to do it quick because they don't have an easy yes. non-conference schedule. Um, but this is a team, we I felt they'd be coming back to the pack a little bit this year. They were picked high a lot. I didn't really see it. But we'll, we'll see what happens by the end of the year for Southwest. But I think this is going to be more toward the 500 range for Southwest this season, personally. Um, take a quick look. Okay, here's our second uh, board. We're going we're to kind of run yep. through these real quick. Uh, Betty, Betty Field, me. 27, Goldsboro, 6, in a game that it featured an over-hour delay for Lightning. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Tyrone Johnson, who is in his last year at the helm, uh, just like David Ortiz will be signing off at the end of the season. We'll see him next. Uh, we'll see him this coming Friday. Yes, we will. As they take on Southern Nash at home, uh, not terribly happy. I believe this is a game that I saw on Twitter featured 13 combined turnovers. Oh, that's right. Uh, so oh. not not a very good game. Normally we'd have Jimmy Lewis telling you about yeah. it, but we haven't gone that route. I'll, I'll be curious Jimmy! to see how this team does now going uh. up against a team that can very easily make them pay for a lot of these mistakes. If they clean them up. Maybe they'll be able to give Southern Nash a game, especially at home. Uh, we saw them a couple years ago pull off an upset at Hunt. Or, or, sorry, at home against Hunt. Right. So we'll see if they can maybe do the same thing at Southern Nash. But if they're going to turn the ball over like they did against Goldsboro, there's this, that 27-6 is going to be a little bit different. That's right. Uh, taking a look at one that was not an upset. No. North Edge comes 70, Northwest Woo! Halifax 20. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not reading too much into this because no. that's typically what you get. Northwest Halifax... There. Not a lot of great football coming out of the Halifax region right I, now. I just, I just, I hate to say it, but I will say it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of the worst programs in the state. It has been for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but take another way from North Edgecombe. Sticking 70, sticking 70. Mm -hmm. um, no you Antoine know, Pittman. Yeah, no Antoine Pittman this year. That's another one that they're, they're kind of turning over some players, mm -hmm. um, some guys who have been at the helm for a long time for them. So uh, North Edgecombe going forward, hey, for North Edgecombe, every win is a good win. Absolutely. That helps, that builds. That's exactly what they need. So big win for North Edge come to kick off their yeah, season. Yeah, a pair of interception returns and a fumble recovery and a punt return for a touchdown. So not just the offense getting That's on the right. board for them. Oh, well. Now the game nearest and dearest <laughs> to my heart. The unofficial 13th team of our team. The Harvard unofficial area. 13th team, folks, because as you, you say, no good football coming out of Halifax. <laughs> I <laughs> beg to differ. Rocky Mount Prep, who is in another incarnation of re new and sure. rebuild I guess well the whole school is now because they yeah, changed ownership they changed everything Charter so uh, you know they're they I'm were sorry. winning 12 nothing at one point it's pre but then the mean machine that could not yeah. be stopped the mighty kippers yes came flying back to take a flying 20 to 18 victory if you've never seen our actual show before if you're tuning in for the first time on the online stream here this man has a very large affection for Kip Bride. I love 
the kippers. Some call it unhealthy. Sometimes they don't have enough players to play games. Fine. That happens. Yep. But when they get on the field, folks, you cannot take away the pride that the kippers have in their hearts. Uh, Kip Pride there, 1-0 on the season. Mm. Speaking of pride. They're coming for you, Plymouth. Terrell Hudgens at our Rocky Mountain Academy after uh, a, a somewhat rocky first season at the helm, taking over for B.W. Holt, although he, he also was rotating a lot of his mm -hmm. roster. They come out with a big win, 50-18 to over Bethel Christian. And this is, you know, a, a side that we, we don't know that much about. He's got some good players. Though. If you remember that team last year, they mm -hmm. played a lot of underclassmen a season ago. Um, that, what that felt like a lot was, was A, it was a transition year. B, it was also a bit of a revenge year for everybody else that yeah. they had been beating for the last two years in the way to back-to-back -back mm -hmm. state titles and, and uh, eight-man. So I think that you, you had a lot of teams gunning for them mm -hmm. and a lot of teams that took advantage of a young roster, mm -hmm. which looks like they're getting better. That's right. You know, we did see them last year, the game we did a season ago. They were uh, explosive. They've got some good, young, explosive players. Isaiah Thomas as a sophomore starting right. quarterback. He's, he's got some wheels to him. Th oh, this team looks one. really good. They're going to be a good football team. That could be another team that's going to compete for a state championship again at Rocky Mountain County. Of course, Terrell Hudgens, dude, you're our guy. Yeah. We we'll love you. Uh, you see down here, Fike and Bunn are postponed until Monday. Um, there were thunderstorms in the area on Friday, and uh, – I think Fike kind of called it a little early, but, you know, hey, betting field got postponed for an hour, so maybe they knew a little bit what they were talking about, but they are going to play on uh, Monday. Now, of course, that is going to give Fike a short schedule, and I'm looking it up right now, but correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they are playing Southwest Hitchcomb coming up next. Um, Checking really quickly here on, on the on the max preps. Oh, I'm sorry, no, they're going to be taking on uh, East Wake. East Wake, okay. East Wake. Oh, okay. So... Um, Tough start for the season coming up for three Fike. Day, three days off before that, then. That's right. Now, Fike got a little news, news and observer love, number 25 in their yeah, preseason 3A poll. So, once again, we'll see where that goes. But a team coming off a 7-6 and six season, mm -hmm. yeah, they must have liked something they saw. Um, no B.J. Daniels this mm -hmm. year. Um, also, no uh, um, big, mean DJ. running back. D.J. Daniels and big, mean running back. Who I, I had. I oh, lost him. Big number 32. He was I a know. baller. I know. I'll, I'll pull it up for you here. Oh, I'll kill him some of a sudden. DJ Daniels actually now playing pro baseball yeah. in the Blue Jays organization. Who knew? Didn't see that one coming. Went from not being a top 50 round pick to seventh round. A.J. Hines. A.J. Hines. I, was, I knew it was a J. I knew it was a J in there. Yeah. Um, but uh, no A.J. Hines, no D.J. Daniels. Uh, but, but, you know, that was a young defense last year that hopefully is taking a big step forward this year. Absolutely. Such football scores this week, yep. folks. In the, uh, in the interest of time, mm -hmm. we're now going to skip to your most exciting minute of the week. Because, folks, it is now time for oh. 60 Seconds O Sucker. Ah, uh, if you are giving me just like another 30 seconds, I actually could have brought up the song. Well, there you go. maybe I'll talk. No. 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 Okay. Uh, folks, if you're, if you're new to the show, 60 Seconds of Soccer, that's all the time we were ever allotted on our old TV yeah. station because – we were told people would turn the channel at that point. But, you know. As our viewers drop to zero. As our viewers drop to zero, we're here to talk to you for just 60 seconds about the beautiful mm -hmm. game. And after that's over, we'll tell you, if you want to hear uh, upwards of 60-plus minutes about the beautiful game, we'll tell you a way to do that. But, Ed, uh, 60 seconds, I don't really care what the clock says. All right. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll just go first and go and get my self-loathing out of the way. All right, go ahead. All right, folks, if we had done this last week, I would have been gloating about how we beat bit. Arsenal 4-3. to three. Yeah. Fun but time. it's this week where we played Lowly Burnley, who I predicted, who I predicted to uh, definitely go down. Yeah. And um, with 81% of the possession and 26 shots, yeah. we didn't score a stinking goal. Yeah. With 19% of the possession and two shots, they scored two goals. Yep. And we can't really Very blame Mignolet for both of them. Can't even blame um, Alvarez and Moreno. Yeah, you we can't, tried. We tried to blame Moreno. <laughs> you tried just, a lot. Um, uh, just a bad, bad week for Liverpool. The questions are still out there. The window's not closed. Believe in the Reds. Believe in the Klopp. League Cup this week. <sighs> Brighton and Hove? Ah, uh, no, it's the other. Burton and Albion. Yeah, Burton and Hove, whatever. whatever. Uh, spaghetti for all as Victor Wanyama in his home debut for Tottenham Hotspur headed home an 82nd minute goal for Tottenham to give them the win over Crystal Palace. No Alan Pardew dancing this week. And, of course, the biggest news coming for us on Friday – We'll be finding out what group of death we'll be playing in the Champions League this year. So congratulations to see Barcelona, yeah. Real, Bayern, we can. somebody. Well, we can see one of them. Well, I'm sure you'll get one of those. Three. We'll probably get one. 
No, no way Moscow. we get CSKA Moscow. No way you're getting Kuska. Yeah. Um, and your number two team will probably be like just PSG or yeah. something. <laughs> I don't even know if that can happen. No. But we could get Atletico as our, as our two team. There you go. Barcelona. No, well, uh, you'll get Bayern. And Bayern, Atletico. Atletico, and Fenerbahce. There you go. That's because why not throw a trip to Turkey in there? Why not? Because nothing good, bad happens in All Turkey. Right. Right, government? Yeah. All right. And um, I think it's about time for us to blow the whistle yeah. and maybe call time here on week one. Well, we have one more thing to go through. Absolutely. Uh, we do have our crystal clear Pepsi six pack. Sure. It's okay. Um, we have Which is back, by the way. We, it's a real thing again. You're welcome, world. Two years ago when we started this, yeah. it was not a real thing anymore. Yeah. We did it because I saw the crystal clear gravy commercial yeah. and just started laughing. And we said, we'll call it the crystal clear Pepsi six pack. Our voices were heard. Yes. Our Loud worldwide global reach was reached. Mm -hmm. And it's back for reals. For realsies. In your store. You're Crystal Clear Pepsi Six Pack. Yeah, take it away. Um, so we don't have a completed one, so you won't probably be seeing these on our Facebook page until Tuesday uh, because this game hasn't happened yet. Fun. This little game right here. Yeah, that don't game. Don't worry about that little game right there. All right. Uh, so you missed uh, Corinth Holders, although, to be fair, everybody missed Corinth Holders. Uh, as Sorry, well as Northern. taking Rocky Mountain Prep over Kip Pride. Just someone who likes Kip Pride so much, you couldn't even pick them. I was going for my wins, and I didn't know if the Kippers were going to have 11. Oh, uh, three and two. That's what you are <laughs> currently, as is Tony Dowdy, who also missed Rocky Mountain Prep. And Corinth Holders did get Rocky Mountain over South Granville, Turbo over Nash Central, and Lumberton over Hunt. I did not pick Lumberton, so I am currently two and three, needing a spike win over Bun to get to 500. And currently Clint Williams, who got Kip Pride, but also pick Nash Central. So he did that out of loyalty. Yes, he did. He's three and two right now loyalty. at the Mo. And uh, I'm the only one who can move up with a bun win. Yep. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, real quick before we sign off, sure. Uh, one thing we've done over the years, our Brian Goodwin update. Yes, folks, we have a really good one because since the last time we saw you, which was a long time yeah. ago, Brian Goodwin made the Triple A All Star game. Mm -hmm. Uh, got called up to the major leagues a couple weeks ago. Had a multi-hit game, yeah, and then got sent back down. And got sent back, got optioned back down. But that's in it. Ten days, he will probably be back, be back in about ten days. Once those rosters expand, uh, they needed some bullpen help. Yeah. Bryce Harper was uh, back healthy. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman right around the corner. So Brian gets a, a a quick cup of coffee in the mayor's couple weeks. But Ed, that should do nothing but just make the hunger to stay there that much that much better. Because Absolutely. if we learn anything from Bull Durham, uh -huh. it's how much better it is to be in the show than not to be in the show. Yeah. So. <laughs> of course you didn't. It was a baseball movie filmed in Durham. How did you miss this? You Rocky Mountain Stadium is <laughs> in know, that movie. Come on, I know, Ed. I know. Ed, your homework is to watch Bull Durham. All the other movies you've missed, that's fine. Bull Durham, that's a North, that's a North Carolina baseball man's movie you've got to see. Okay. Susan Sarandon is fire in it. I've, I've heard. Her daughter. I remember when uh, Baseball Tonight did a parody commercial of that and Peter oh. Gammons played uh, her Baseball part. Baseball Oh, oh my. <laughs> Ed, you, you've got your, your lovely one, uh, one name producer, Jackie. Who, here. by the way, we should mention, one name field producer, Jackie, you need to come in here so you can eventually end this show. That's right, because we no longer at this point have uh, one name producer, no. Leandris. He will, he's, he's still manning the boards. Uh, he's bringing to you uh, your high school football games of the week. Right. He's still producing those for you, though. Now, folks, uh, real quick, I told you where you could get 60-plus minutes of soccer talk a yes. week, Ed. That's the Foreign Affair podcast. New episodes, conveniently enough, every week show up on this Facebook page right. right here below us. They also appear on the iTunes Music Store, Google Play Music, Spreaker, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, the TuneIn Radio app, and many other places as well. We do Twitter. Thanks to NGSC Sports for that. Twitter, at AFA Pod for the podcast. For this, you can find us at All New Sports Show. You are at West Bradshaw 21. We need men in blazers style signs. I am at Edward Green. We can do that, eh? And uh, as you can see, we're here on Facebook. We're also on Instagram, right. All New Sports Show. We're on YouTube, The All New Sports Show. And you can email us, allnewsportshow at gmail.com. So finally, while we're doing all this online stuff, you can always mail us letters and parcels to 1701 Sunset Avenue, Suite 201, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, 27804. Not giving your home address, huh? Nope. All righty. What then. home address? This what? is the panic room. What? Well, don't we have a P.O. box for the panic room? Nope. Panic room P.O. box. All right, folks, that is going to do it for yep. us today. Uh, Ed Graham, Wes Bradshaw, for one name, technical producer Jackie, mm -hmm. who is hitting all the buttons. Uh, big thanks to her. Oh, She's even doing the Clint Williams style. Oh, so there it is. There it is. The phone. That's there awesome. Is. I love it.
love it. Oh, look out. Look at that. The fade in, the fade out. Love it. She's learned well. Folks, uh, join us here every week. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, so we get a sponsor. Yep. Get some when, money. Get back on And we still might do it here. Yeah. Hey, folks, if you do want to sponsor, uh, get in touch with Ed on his uh, on his uh, Twitter. Yeah, uh, or Green. Or, uh, or the, um, the Gmail. Yeah. So, you know, hey, we're always uh, we're always looking for a good sponsor right here. So, that'll do it. We'll see you guys next week. Do you have a pen? Throw? You have no. Yeah, I'm just going to throw this. You can throw that. That's fine. Folks, we're going to see you guys next week back here for more of the all-new sports show. Good night, America. Awesome.